Hey shooters, Devin from Renaissance. Gonna bring you a little bit of a different kind of video today. We're gonna go more the informative route. We have a lot of guys coming to the shop, they talk about their home defense weapons, what they're using to protect themselves with and their families. That's something that I know I'm really passionate about. I know a lot of you are too. So today, we're gonna talk about the safety of using a weapon for home defense inside your home. And as we go through all this, I want you to know I'm not uh, advocating that you don't have a weapon in your home or that you don't have a particular weapon. I'm not here to judge. I just wanna to try to put out some some facts to the best of our ability to present them. It's gonna be informative for us. We haven't shot this before. All the targets are gonna be fresh and it'll be kind of a surprise to see what happens. So if you'll follow me, you'll see we got a layout of guns, everything from a 12 gauge shotgun, a 38, a nine mil, a 45. We also have a 300 blackout, an AR-15, and then I also have a 308. It is not a tactical 308 because I don't own an AR-10, but I know some guys who think that an AR-10 is an excellent home defense gun. So uh, we'll be firing that projectile out of my bolt gun. We'll see how that goes. And then to show you the setup, if you'll follow me right now, we're 14 feet from the target set, which from my house, I just went upstairs and measured it. 14 feet is from my bedroom to the furthest wall. Now from that furthest wall, I have standard two by four construction. Now this is 5 8 inch sheetrock. This is uh, up to fire code. And we spaced it with no insulation because it's gonna be an interior wall. And then my stairwell is on the other side and that's 46 inches wide. And then from there, I have my first bedroom in my home and that's approximately 96 inches long and a little bit deeper too. And then I have my, my daughter's bedroom on the other side of that. So I have a guest room and then my daughter's bedroom. So today we're gonna to be testing what kind of projectiles I could shoot and in a worst case situation in the dark, what would happen if I missed? So what happens if it goes through that sheetrock, if it doesn't stop in the bad guy or if it over penetrates through him as well? You know, it's gonna be dark, you're gonna be scared. I don't think we're all gonna guarantee that we have 100% hit ratio. Some of us will, I'm not gonna. Um, so we're gonna plan for the worst. We're gonna see what happens. And then if we just see that we're penetrating all of them, we'll, we'll start stacking up. We got extra frames built over here to, uh, to test. So we're gonna test shotgun, rifle, pistol. I hope you enjoy the video and uh, I'm pretty excited to see what happens. Let's check it out. So today we're gonna start it off with a 22. Personally, in my humble opinion, I don't think you should use a 22 for home defense. It's kind of like shooting a BB gun at a bear. Um, probably not gonna be the most effective stopping round. Uh, you'll also notice we're shooting off a Ruger with a uh, Surefire can on it. We're doing that mostly to keep my neighbors from complaining. So uh, later we'll be shooting some ladder things that don't have cans, so we might as well use them while we can. Um, I would not recommend using this in a home defense situation because it hasn't really been established what would happen as far as police confiscation of the weapon. Because if you use a gun in self-defense, it's going to go to the police, at least until you're cleared. And uh, you wouldn't want to complicate that things by having a can. So just want to say that's why we're using it. Let's see what we do. Okay, so you'll notice we have multiple holes. This took us multiple tries. That was my third shot. Third shot. Third shot. And we're having some pretty serious bullet deflection. I don't think that's it. Nope, that's not it. So uh, the bullet veered off and didn't hit it. So we're gonna say that it at least is gonna go through the stairwell and it's gonna go into my guest room. So if I got anybody in there, it's probably not around I wanna be using. Okay. Next up, I don't think it's gonna to be too terribly surprising what this does, is a 5.56. Lots of guys talking about how they're gonna bring in their CQB AR and start sweeping the house. All power to you, buddy. Let's see how it works out. One, two, three. Now something to note interesting here is the projectile was going sideways by the time it hit the third, or the fourth. So now we're starting to have bullet deformation. And again, it's not connecting, but at the same time, I'm not gonna build a whole room out here just for this video. <laughs> so we're gonna see if we can connect with some more. I might put some frames up a little bit closer. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what's next. So we shot again, we added a couple frames. Holy cow, that bullet went sideways. This is my first shot, this is my second. This is a new frame. This is an FMJ round. Look at it sideways, totally. Totally through here, giant blowout. Hit this one, then came spraying out the side. We can't even get it to go straight enough. But 
looking at, we were saying originally that one, two, three walls was the full length of my home into my daughter's house, or into my daughter's room. I would say that this now makes that round untenable for home defense, at least for my position, because I don't want to know that my son's room is only one room away, my daughter's room is three, and I'm going clear through that. So we'll try uh, 300 blackout, just to see what kind of damage it does to the wall, and then we'll talk about how it's going through and check it out. Now, uh, now we're gonna be shooting a 300 blackout. Uh, it normally has a can on it, we took it off just uh, so as not to change anything from how we shoot it for home defense. So this is an interesting change to see what happens. This is a subsonic round, I'll hold it up, see if we can get it in the camera. This is a Hornady self-defense round subsonic traveling just around 1,000 feet per second. So we'll see if a little bit of a slower round does a little bit better. Maybe it won't tumble so quickly. I don't know, time to find out. <laughs> One, two, real big hole. Three, bigger hole. Four, very holy cow. That's you can, where you can see on the backside, the bullet expansion just blown out from the other side, much bigger hole. Four. And this one was a pretty new piece of wood. Okay, so here you can see it shrapneled and broke apart because it's a defense round. And then that hit the last one and just totally destroyed this frame. Uh, but of note, it kept going. So whatever the slug was, the lead part of the shell continued through. This is now the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty true to its course, actually. And then somewhere between eight and nine, we still have no penetration. So uh, that was a subsonic round in a 30 caliber. So it should be a slower bullet, less kinetic energy. You'd think it would penetrate less. Uh, I'm looking back at these frames thinking, maybe we're gonna have to look somewhere else. 12 gauge, I've been told that the second amendment was meant so that we can make this noise because that's gonna scare the living death out of everybody. But in case it doesn't, we also, we're gonna start with birdshot, which is kind of a interesting choice, right? Not exactly gonna be lethal for a man unless it's up close, but then let's see how much, I've always heard it'll never penetrate more than two layers of sheetrock. Well, today we're gonna find out. You'll notice I'm sitting from the shooting, or shooting from the sitting position, and that's because our sheetrock's down low. So this is just to get the right line of fire through the uh, sheetrock. Let's see what happens. So as we can see, the first frame, totally destroyed. A little bit more than I thought, but definitely gonna do some pain. It hit the second, actually broke it off its base. Still got a lot of penetration. Went through the second frame, or so that's the fourth, and went all the way into the fifth. And now you can see there's some BBs stuck. I got one, two, three, four pellets of penetration. And that's, they're all stuck right here. And they bounced right right there so i would say if you're going to shoot a shotgun in your side of your house i'd be thinking about what's definitely in the next two rooms definitely not the third i think this is going to make the uh buckshot and slug a little less uh exciting so we'll check that out next so we saw the bird shot now we're going to try buckshot see what happens i'm going to shoot through the same frame just a little bit lower down see what our penetration looks like Don't be in my bedroom. Don't be in my lat in my stairway. Almost called it a ladder well. So you can see there's a pretty tight buckshot pattern. This is double odd buck, American gunner. One, two, three, four, five. We missed one. It probably came off the side. And every single one of them went through. So that totally would have gone into my daughter's bedroom. So I'm gonna nix off buckshot and probably hold off on that. So I'm just gonna say, I'm not even really gonna bother shooting slug because mostly I'll ruin all of my sheetrock and then some shooting a one ounce lead slug. Uh, yes, would it hurt the bad guy? Absolutely. Would it also hurt me and my neighbor? Quite possibly. Next up in the handgun category, we're gonna go with a nine mil. This is a Hornady self-defense round. So you can see it's a polymer tip made for controlled expansion. So the idea being it should transfer more kinetic energy faster to a human target, we'll see what it does to some sheetrock.
first round, second round, third sheet, fourth, fifth bullet starts veering off. And definitely was going through the sixth. So if we said this is the stairwell, and this is the next room, we're pushing into the third room, assuming that we're not gonna lose too much feet per second. That's from the 300 blackout, we just kept the frame. So, okay, nine mil, uh, pretty impressive penetration. Uh, let's check out what we get with a 38. Okay, next up, Snub Nose 38. This is a Smith, uh, Smith & Wesson, 642 in 38. Uh, I have Federal Plus P ammo. Again, these are hollow points, jacketed, made for self-defense. This is spear. Uh, I have one round in the gun. Let's see what it does. One, two, three, with some shrapnel. Four, much bigger hole. Five, you can see now we got a bullet going sideways. Six, bullet going sideways. Seven, again, that's the, that's the 300 blackout, so not what we're looking for, but again, stairwell, first room, second room. Starting to think I might use pepper spray, I don't know. Okay, up next, a Kimber Tactical, 1911 and 45. Again, I'm shooting that Hornady Critical Defense, uh, jacket hollow point, so we'll see what happens. I cannot tell you how weird it is to be shooting sitting down. Okay, center mass hit, looking good. Oh, oh, we have one in the last frame, I can already see it. One, two, three, four, getting bigger, five, six, seven, getting bigger with deformation and some fracturing of the projectile. See giant hole on the back of number eight. Nine, 10. Okay, so if the 45 made it, we know that at the very least, our rifle rounds would have made it if they hadn't deformed. So I'd say this is where we're probably gonna end the video. Um, man, so obviously when you're talking about self-defense, a lot of these projectiles are made to go into, into fluid, right? Because we're 70 to 80% water. So that's gonna do a lot more stopping than just some drywall. All this is do, meant to do is stop your house from burning down as fast. It's not meant to stop bullets, it's not meant to be bulletproof. You're also gonna have things like, you know, wiring and conduit, but we can't plan on for those things. We can't look for safety. So what we are gonna do is Make sure we hit the target, but more importantly, it's that fifth safety rule, right? Know your target and what lies beyond. If your daughter's in the next room, maybe it's time where you get up and try to just beat the guy to death or whatever it takes to defend your family. Um, I'm not advocating that as something, but I just, we gotta be aware of what lies behind our target. This is 10 pieces of sheetrock. This is going through four rooms and then continuing on. So uh, I hope you found this as an informative video. Oh, wait, we have one more thing to carry our point. Okay, so I figure some of you are a little hard-headed. You're like, Devin, you don't know what you're doing. Devin, that's not, you know, up to code sheetrock. It is, by the way. Devin, you know, it's not that big a deal. There's no way my projectile would go through that. So we thought maybe there should be a more kinetic example. And that, kids, is why home defense in the home is a very serious subject with a not-so-serious ending. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And uh, if you have any questions or video ideas, we'd love to hear them. God bless America, except for the state of California. <laughs>